Well, I have yet another package. This time, okay. Y'all probably recall when I did the power door conversion on this truck, I got the whole wiring harness that goes into the dash and the wireless or the keyless entry receiver module. Well, I'm finally getting remotes for that. <laughs> So here they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is, five stars, or we won't like you. I don't care. <laughs> I'll rate it five stars if this works. How about that? All right. I even get key rings with it. Awesome. All right. I don't even know if these things have batteries in them. But we're about to find out. Now, how to program this truck. There's a certain wire that I had to put into that little white harness up top. It's a black wire with a white stripe. And that is the class 2 data bus for the keyless entry receiver. Now, what I have to do in order to program these remotes is short that line to ground. And the way you do that is... You come down to this little onboard diagnostics port and you jump for a wire between number four and number eight. And the doors do their thing. And then you hold down both buttons on the remotes. And then you can pull that and then That was way too easy. <laughs> How about that? Now I now I finally have a remotes for my truck again. It unlocks the driver's side first and then you hit it again and unlocks the passenger side. That's pretty cool actually. That is the default method. And the FCC ID and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I had to match that up. I had to make sure I had the right number on the back of the remotes because they make so many different remotes for these year models and different FCC IDs and they're not compatible with each other go figure so awesome <laughs> that was almost too easy well there you go there's how you do that and I got a couple other things planned for not only this wire here but these two switches for the e-fans I'm gonna pull this wire off of these two contacts and just leave it back at this third one here and then these two switches are actually going to be controlling relays to power the fan because of the fact that these are ground activated wires. So we're going to have that going on and I built myself a little relay pack over here. It's kind of a mess but it'll get the job done. These two wires here will go to the ground side on the LED and these two will go to the switch side of the switch and then the switches will be constant powered to the center terminal and all that fun stuff. I should have another switch around here somewhere, I think. I should be able to show you what I'm doing here. All right, where is my box of switches? It got crushificated. Sweet, that's awesome. Now it's leaking my freaking nuts everywhere. That's just great, I wonder why that happened. Probably because I just wanted to be a jerk. It's usually the only reason stuff like this happens. Okay. Well, looks like I need to find another box for them now. But anyway, as I was saying, what's gonna happen is, okay. You see, it's actually labeled with where everything should be connected here. Okay, you got 12 volt input. That should be constant 12 volt. This is the switch side. So that when you flip the switch, this 
will also be 12 volt. And the LED goes straight from this terminal across up into the bulb and down to this terminal. It's constant. So if you were to hook up a power to this side and a ground to this side, no matter what, the LED would always be on. Which, in our, in our particular predicament, we don't want that. We only want the LED to turn on when the switch is on. So, we'll have constant power coming in here. The switch side will go out to the relay. And the ground will go from here to the relay. And then the relay will be going to ground. So, I'm not explaining it very well, but I can show you a schematic I made later. So, that's how that's going to be, and that's what I'm going to do in a little bit once I get back to my apartment, where I have a little bit more access to wiring and all that fun stuff. And I can pull this whole plate out of here with all the switches in it, everything. Yeah, make a little bit less of a mess out of everything, right? Well, anyway, I'm going to get going here. This is awesome, and I just had to go ahead and show that. Okay, they do both work. Sweet! Alright, so now that I'm back at my place and have a little bit more access to the stuff I need, I can show you kind of what's going on under here. Basically, this plate's just uh, held in under here by these two nuts, which are actually part of what holds this dash plate in place. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a mess right now because I haven't really done anything with it for a while. That's the amp remote connector and the two various e-fan connectors. So, yeah, I need to get this switch here wired to a ground point. Probably right there would be fine. Just replace this wire here. It's, it's just a total mess under here. I need to get this thing fixed. Yeah, so there's that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have hot power going to both of these. Well, it's going to be uh, ignition power, actually. And then switches going to those two relays I showed you earlier. And then these two down here are going to go to the other two ports on the relay. And, uh, yeah, I just need to get this out of the way first. Yeah, there we go. And I can just wrap it around here like crazy because it ain't going to matter at all. Now, the way I did this wiring diagram is so that the LEDs will turn on both when I hit this switch and when the uh, computer under the de or under the hood, when the engine computer also turns them on. So, if the engine computer turns them on and the switch is off, the LED will still illuminate. At least, theoretically. We'll just say that. <laughs> That's the way I want it to work. And then, of course, when I turn the switch on, I want, them to turn, I want it to turn the LED on as well. So that, theoretically, is how this is going to work. So, I'm just going to go ahead and put it all together and figure out how I'm going to keep these relays out of the way under the dash. And, uh, I'll come back to it when it's all done up. Well, we got one light on. Wiring needs to be held up a little bit in here, but things are working the way they're supposed to be. Amp remote has its own little power supply now. I can turn that off if I want. Plus, it's ignition switched. And then, of course, there's the LED shut off that has no effect on the actual electronics except for the LEDs and the switches. Then there's the E-Fan 1. E fan 2. So, that is working. This is all working out a lot better than I had thought it would. Now, all I gotta do is just get things to kind of clean up a little bit in here. And, well, either way, still, <laughs> just walking up to the truck, you would not know it was there at all. And sitting in the driver's seat, you cannot see anything until you get down to, like, where my butt would be. So, there you go. But, at night, I'm sure the light's going to be shining pretty bright. At least, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> 
That's what I'm hoping for. Get a lot of blue light shining down at my feet, you know. When I get a couple more switches in use in here, I have the blue wire also connected that goes to the back of the truck and I'm like kind of going back and forth between making that a constant feed so I can have it on any time or if I'm just gonna go ahead and set that as a as another ignition and feed so yeah a little bit of thinking to do but I don't have anything to put back there that I would need that for anyway so I'm not gonna worry about it right now in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pull some more stuff out of my truck, including this load of tapes, and one of which is actually in the player right now. Yeah, I'm listening to the Oak Ridge Boys, because I'm into some of that old stuff. Here. Yeah, good stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and take care of things, and I guess whatever happens will happen.